Hello everyone and welcome back to another Stormworks video. In this video we're back testing some more modular engines and we're going to be looking to see if it is possible to supercharge your engine and actually see if it is possible to get more performance out of your engines. Now there's a couple different ways that you can supercharge your engine and we're going to look at a few different ways in this video. We have got a couple different pumps that we're going to be testing out to see which one will actually perform the best. Now we're also going to be measuring a few different things today. A lot of you guys did comment and see, told me that you wanted a better readout to see how much fuel these would use. So we actually have a new dial today which is going to be the fuel rate and that's liters per second. This way it will give us a little bit more accurate readout of how much fuel these different engines will be using. We're going to be building I think about five engines today uh, and testing out the different configurations. So we're going to start with just a very basic engine just as a regular intake and we'll be stepping it up to the different ones, seeing what the performance difference is, seeing what the fuel usage difference is between those engines and we're also going to be seeing if we can step this up or scale this up into larger engines and seeing if we can still get a performance increase by adding these pumps on. So with that all set, let's jump straight into it and let's get started. Now, before we get to actually building, a few things we need to get out of the way like we usually do. Now, we're going to be testing this out with my modular engine controller. This is a set RPS controller that regulates depending on how many, how much air you give it, how much fuel you give it, and what AFR values you actually want and what RPS you want. So this will be the main factor here. Along with that is we're going to be testing it on a flat or a boxer engine, okay? Now, your results might vary if you're building on a straight or a radial or so on. We're also going to be using a generator here to see what the power output is of these engines. Okay, once again, your mileage might vary depending on what use case you're using this for, whether you're powering uh, wheels or propeller or uh, helicopter blades, etc. Your mileage might vary. So just keep that in mind, please. So with that said, we're going to start building our engine. So we're going to have exactly the same engine for all our different examples. The only difference is how we're going to get the air into the actual engine itself and how we're going to power the pumps that are getting the air into the engine. So let's build the first engine. Now with all engines here in, in Stormworks, they will need four things to actually run. We're going to need air, fuel, cooling, and exhaust. So let's start by adding those four components onto this engine. So the first thing we're going to add is going to be the air intake. So let's go and do that. You can see here I've got an air manifold. I'm just going to place it here on the side of my creation. The next thing we're going to need is a fuel. So let's go and get a fuel manifold and we're going to place that underneath the side of the creation. You'll notice I've already got a fuel tank here just to save a little bit of time. We're going to go and place that down, get some corner pipes in here, and that's going to be our fuel connected. We can also do our cooling while we're back here. So we're going to add a cooling manifold just to the back. Now, as I've mentioned in previous videos, I'm not doing a proper fuel uh, or cooling system here. This is just going to be a simple loop system, allowing fluid to go in the engine, slightly cool it and carry on. These engines will not be running for long enough for us to worry about cooling. Okay, so please just keep that in mind. This is not a proper way to cool your engine. Great, we have fuel, we have air, we have cooling, we also need exhaust. So we're just going to add a simple exhaust out the back and a simple exhaust port. Now you could use a fluid port here, you could use a few different things. Once again, your mileage might vary. I'm keeping our testing, testing very standard between all of our creations today. Yes, by changing some of these components or the configuration of them, you might have different results. However, all of our vehicles will be exactly the same or engines will be exactly the same. That way we can actually see if the pump is the thing that is making a difference in the performance, not something else that we're adding in the connection here. So now that we've got the exhaust, the cooling, the air and the fuel, we also need something to start our engine. We're using a starter motor. You could use an electrical engine. That way you could get your engine started up a little bit quicker. Uh, I'm not going to be using it today. I'm just going to use a simple starter motor over there. We're also going to need our clutch. That way we can get our power out of our engine into our generator. You also might see a performance increase by adding gearboxes on here. I would definitely recommend you add gearboxes. But once again, for our testing, we are not going to be doing that. All right, cool. So now that we have everything else on, the last thing we need is a manifold to connect our two cylinder banks together. Okay, because they are completely separate, we do need to connect them and share the fuel, air, exhaust and cooling. As you can see there, that's how we're going to do it. Cool. So now our engine is up and running. We're going to keep this one as our basic one, which is going to be just naturally aspirated. So we're going to add a simple air filter today. 
Once again, your mileage might vary if you guys are using an air ram or a scoop or a fluid port or a intake. Once again, it might be a little bit different. I'm going to be using an air filter for the purpose of this testing. Now that we have that, let's go and connect all the logic. So we're going to start with our composite. As you can see, it's connected already. Electricity, make sure that's connected to everything. So there we go. We're also going to be connecting our logic here. Okay, so air is going to go to my air. Fuel is going to go to my fuel. Our clutch is going to go over to my clutch. And everything else should be connected here. We shouldn't really have to do too much more. And we should be able to just copy this across over and over again and just change the pumps on them. So now that we've got our engine, let's just test to make sure this actually runs and does work. Okay, so key switch, throttle is already at 100%. This should start up, as you can tell. Happy, generators outputting, and we've also got our fuel rate. Perfect. So now we can duplicate this another four times, and that way we can add all of our different pumps on. So now that I have the same engine five times, we're now going to start adding these pumps on. So let's start on the far end. We're going to be using a pump that is driven by the belt of your engine. Okay. So you can see here, we actually have to add it on to our drive belt, which is just here in the front. And we're now going to go and start redirecting our air. So the air is going to come in from here. Okay. So in this pump, it's then going to go out the pump and into our intake of our manifold here. We're still going to be using an air filter on this one, as you can see just over there. Now, the, what this does is it uses the power of the crankshaft to turn that pump, forcing more air into your engine. So as this turns more, it will force more and more air through. Okay, so that's the first solution that we're going to try today. The next thing we're going to use is we're going to use an impeller pump. Now, an impeller pump uses your engine power from an actual pipe to go and turn the pump. Okay. So we're going to add this on. I'm just going to go and rotate this until it's in the right direction. So there we go. We've got our fluid in. So we're going to add another air in and we've got our torque. So the torque is going to come from the back. So where we have our clutch. So just simply over here, it's going to come out and we're going to get it connected to our impeller pump. Great. So a very similar solution to the first one. We're still using engine power to actually turn the pump to get more air into our engine. The next solution we're going to do is we're going to use a small pump or a regular pump in Stormux. So we're going to go onto the end here, delete the air. We're going to go and rotate this round and we're simply just going to go and add an air filter in the front. Okay. So now we're using a regular pump there. The last solution is to use a large pump. So we're once again going to come here. We're going to make some space on our engine. So possibly over here. We have our in and our out, so we're just going to flip this around like that, and we're going to connect this up. So from my air in over there, going down, and then into our air manifold. Okay. So now that we've got that on, we of course need to make sure we connect anything that we haven't connected. Now with the actual belt driven clutch or pump, whatever you guys want to call it, this will need someone it has clutch pressure. So I'm just going to connect that over to my throttle. That way it's always going to be open. It's always going to be increasing my actual pump there. The next thing we're going to need is this one here is driven by the engine. So we don't have to worry about that. This one will need some electricity and it will need to be turned on. So we're going to add some electricity and I'm going to get my key switch to turn that on. The same thing goes for my large pump key switch to turn it on and electricity to actually get it up and running. Okay. So now that we've got all of our different pumps on there, let's go and test them and see if we actually get any performance increase. And if we do, how much and at what cost of fuel do we actually have get that from? Okay, so now we've got all our engines on, let's go and start all of them up. Now they are all set to 100 RPS to start with. So we're gonna get all of these up and running. And then we're gonna start by having a look at the first one and seeing what the difference is. So let's go all the way to the first one, which is just simply a air going into the engine. It's not powered by any pump. Okay. So these are all actually running by the way at around 14.7 uh, AFR, just if you're wondering to keep the, obviously to keep the testing consistent. So the RPS that we're getting on this engine is around 9.16. Obviously that might fluctuate ever so slightly. 
we are getting 20 output on our generator and we're also getting a fuel rate of 0 0.07. Let's go over to our first one, which is our belt driven engine. So we've got an RPS of 9.96, that's increasing. Our output is 24.5 or 20.5, etc. And we've got a fuel rate of what, 0 0.09. Okay, so we've gone up in our fuel rate. Let's go and check out our impeller pump, which is being driven by the engine. RPS of 10.8, so increase straight away, okay. We can also see our output is 29 in comparison to 24, and our fuel rate is 0 0.12 in comparison to 0 0.8, 0 0.9 here, okay. So increase fuel, but we're getting a little bit more power out of this engine. You can see it's actually still going up, and this one too is still going up here. Let's go and check out our small pump. Small pump's giving us around 10.21, so yeah, less than the impeller. We're getting 25 out, 31 out, and a 0.09, so not that great for a small little pump here. What about a large one? We got 17 RPS, wow, okay, that's good. 70 output on our engine. What? That's incredible. But our fuel rate, look at that, 0.25 in comparison to 0.07 but man look at the difference we've got almost a what double triple more than triple the performance from exactly the same engine just by adding a large pump onto it that is incredible and obviously you can see the fuel usage in comparison so do superchargers work yes they do do they make a difference Yes, they can, depending in certain situations. And obviously, how much fuel do you want to use in your creation to get so much power out? As I said earlier, your mileage might vary depending if you're using wheels, different size of your engine, uh, and how you obviously have built it here. So now that we've tested it out, we're going to go and see if we can actually scale this up into a larger engine and see if we can still get the performance benefit from adding pumps on. Now we're going to be doing a medium engine build. So you can see I've actually got two already in here. Uh, one we're just gonna keep natural and normal. Whereas the other one, we're actually gonna test the large pump. Seems so that one performed the best for us in our last example, in the last testing run. So we're going to use one of those to see the difference. Now, both these engines are completely identical. Once again, your mileage might vary. I've just got two cylinders two crankshafts over here. Once again, we could add more cylinders, better performance. We could add uh, gearboxes, all kinds of things. I have increased the size of the generator uh, for this testing, just because I know these engines are gonna obviously produce more power. So we wanna put more load on them. So what we're going to do is we're gonna grab the large pump and let's go and add that on over here. So I'm just gonna find a nice spot to put this in, maybe just here on the side of the creation. So over here, and let's go and just rotate this round and we can stick it just over there. So we're gonna go from our pump into our actual air manifold. Okay, so fluid out into our air manifold. And then just over here, we're going to go and add a simple uh, air intake. So there we go, air filter, done. Okay, so that's the two differences. Uh, of course, we need to make sure we add electricity to the pump and we also turn that pump on when we turn our actual creation on because that will make a difference. So spawning in the creations, let's go and test these two engines out. So we're gonna get the first one started and we're gonna get our second one started just over here. And let's see what the difference is between these two. Hopefully this should scale up and this one should have a ton more performance in comparison to the other one. So it looks like we're sitting around what, 26, 27 RPS. We're getting around 650, 660 outputs and we're using around 2.5 liters a second, which is quite a lot of fuel. Uh, let's check the next one. So 31 RPS in comparison to 26. Generator is 920 in climbing compared to 670, still climbing there. And fuel usage is nearly, yeah, double, more than double. Wow, we've got 5.1 on there. Now, I guess we could keep on adding pumps and getting more performance. Uh, just keep an eye on my controller here is we're giving this a 0.7 fuel in order to catch up with that air. Whereas here, we're giving it only 0.46 to catch up with the air on this engine. Obviously, the more air we're throwing in this engine, we have to give it more fuel 
in theory, to obviously produce the same AFR target, which is 14.7. And that's how we are getting the more performance out of that engine in comparison. So we could add another pump, but I would be a little bit concerned about my fuel not being able to maintain enough. Or obviously, we might want to add a pump onto our fuel then too. Uh, that could also be something that we could look at. But uh, yeah, very interesting results here, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm going to turn these engines off. And I think that's uh, some pretty interesting results and some good results at the same time. So we've learned quite a few things. Obviously, you can get away with just letting normal air in your engine with no pumps at all. Uh, we also looked at differences between using a bulk driven, a pump driven uh, pump or impeller pump. Uh, and we also looked at the differences of using the two electrical pumps. And it seems like the electrical pumps are the best, well, at least the large one is at least. Uh, the best pump obviously is getting the most air in. Whereas I think if I wasn't to use a large one, I'd probably go with maybe either impeller or the belt driven one. Uh, I don't think the small one is a good idea, to be honest. But uh, yeah, some very interesting results. Obviously, we nearly double your performance by adding a impeller pump or adding a electric pump onto your engine. So guys, I hope you have enjoyed this. Uh, it's been very interesting for me. It kind of makes me feel like I'm never going to build a modular engine without a pump on it now. So yeah, uh, definitely changing my way of building and maybe yours too. If it has, let me know in the comments. What do you guys think of these videos? Do you guys want to see a video if we can see if we can possibly turbocharge the old engines or supercharge the old engines here in Stomachs? Let me know what you guys think. Uh, just a note here at the end is you guys currently can't actually turbocharge your engine. So turbocharging your engine is actually using the exhaust uh, of your engine to turn this pump instead of using the engine power. The problem is the only way in theory to do that would be to use the impeller pumps. But the, currently the impeller pumps only take torque in, they actually don't send torque out. So in theory, if you put fluid in here, uh, it doesn't actually turn the torque. So that's just something just to keep in mind. So you can't theoretically turbocharge your engines, uh, as far as I'm aware, at least from my testing. Uh, but supercharging does work, so you can supercharge your engines if you want to, like we've seen in the video today. Um, so yeah, guys, give me a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it. It really does help out the video. Uh, obviously, a lot of effort goes into making these videos for you, so hitting the like button really does help out. If you don't want to miss any of my future content, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Uh, and if you don't want to miss out uh, on my videos as soon as they get posted, make sure you hit that little bell icon to be notified as soon as they get released. And until the next one, we'll see you then.